let's take a look at an introduction to measures of central tendency. Here's a histogram of survival times in days of 60 guinea pigs that were infected with tuberculosis. This was from an experiment investigating the effect of tuberculosis on guinea pig survival. In addition to plots, we often report a numerical measure of central tendency. For instance, we might report the average survival time, or the median survival time. So let's take a look at some of those measures. I'm going to assume in this video that the data is from a sample and does not represent the entire population. This is almost always the case in practice. If the data represented the entire population, the notation would be a little bit different. The sample mean x bar is just the regular old ordinary average. We add up all of the observations and divide by the number of observations. This is the arithmetic mean, as opposed to other kinds of means like the harmonic mean or geometric mean. The median is the value that falls in the middle when the observations are ordered from smallest to largest. If n is odd, there will be one value in the middle, and the median is that middle value. If n is even, there will be two values that fall in the middle, and the median is the average of those two middle values. There isn't universal notation for the median. You might see the median labeled as x with a tilde, or as a big M, or as MD, or possibly something else. The mode is the most frequently occurring value in the sample. In some situations in statistics, the mode is an important quantity, but in most situations when we are summarizing sample data, the mean and the median are much more meaningful. Let's work through a simple example. Suppose we have this sample of six observations. Since no number occurs more than once, they all occur the same number of times, we'd say there is no mode. To find the mean, we add all the values and divide by 6, the number of values. Here, that works out to 6.5, so our sample mean is 6.5. To find the median, we first need to order the values from smallest to largest, which I've done here. And since there are six values here, an even number of values, there are two middle values, 5.0 and 6.2. The median is the average of those two values, or 5.6. Let's look at those values on a number line. Here's a dot plot of the observations. The median is right here at 5.6, halfway between the two middle observations. The mean is a little bit larger at 6.5 we'll see that extreme values have much more of an effect on the mean than the median. And to illustrate that, let's see what happens when we change the largest value here, 14.1, to 26.1. Or in other words, we move this green dot way out here to 26.1. Increasing the largest value to 26.1 from 14.1 has greatly increased the mean, which is now 8.5. The mean has increased two units, but the median hasn't changed at all. Extreme values have much more of an effect on the mean than the median. To illustrate that another way, let's suppose these dots had physical weight, an equal weight for each dot, and they were resting on a stiff board of negligible weight. A fulcrum placed at the mean would balance the dots. The mean represents the balance point. That can sometimes help us visualize where the mean might be on a plot. If we shifted the fulcrum over and placed it at the median, then the weights wouldn't balance and the board would tip. A fulcrum placed at the mean would balance the weights, and a fulcrum placed anywhere else and the board would tip. Let's return to the guinea pig survival time data, and here's the histogram again. The class in the histogram that has the greatest number of observations is sometimes called the modal class. So this class here, the 150 to 200 class, is the modal class for this data. The median is the value of the variable that has half the observations to the left and half the observations to the right. You can't figure out the median precisely just from the histogram, but I went to the raw data on which the histogram is based and found out that the median is 214.5, right about there. At 214.5, 50% of the observations lie to the left and 50% of the observations lie to the right. 
I also went to the raw data and found out that the sample mean is 241.2. Note that the mean is a little bigger than the median here. These larger values in the right tail will have more of an effect on the mean than the median. They'll pull the mean out toward them a little bit. This distribution is a little right skewed, and for right skewed distributions, the mean is greater than the median. Here's a left skewed distribution. Here again the median is the value of the variable that has half the observations to the left and half the observations to the right. And if we went to the raw data and calculated the mean, we'd see that it's a little less than the median. These values out here in the left tail will have more of an effect on the mean than the median. For left skewed distributions, the mean is less than the median. Here's a perfectly symmetric distribution. We'd see here that the median falls right in the center and that the mean is exactly equal to the median. For a perfectly symmetric distribution, the mean and median will be equal. And for an approximately symmetric distribution, the mean and median will be close in value. To sum up, compared to the median, the mean uses more information in the sense that it uses the actual value of every observation. This has good and bad points. It uses more information, but if there are extreme observations present, then the mean will be influenced by those values much more than the median will be, and sometimes it can be a misleading measure. So when should we report the mean and when should we report the median? In many situations, it's reasonable to report both measures. The reader can then make up their own mind about which is the more appropriate measure of center in a given situation. Here are a couple of overall thoughts about when we'll be using the median and when we'll be using the mean. The median is a very useful descriptive measure of center. It's often reported in situations where there are extreme values or skewness present, like in housing prices or salaries. The mean is more influenced by those extreme values, but it does have some very nice mathematical properties and is often used in statistical inference procedures. There are many other measures of central tendency that are sometimes used, and here are a few. There's the trimmed mean, in which a certain percentage of the largest and smallest observations are removed before calculating the mean. For example, we might throw out the largest 10% and smallest 10% of the observations, then calculate the average of the remaining values. This would, of course, result in a mean that isn't as sensitive to extreme values, but it comes with a loss of information. There's the weighted mean, where different values are given more weight in the calculations. And as I mentioned earlier, our usual mean, the sample mean x bar, is the arithmetic mean. But there are different types of mean, like the harmonic mean and the geometric mean. Depending on the scenario, one of these might be a more appropriate measure to use. But for most situations we'll encounter, we'll find that the sample mean x bar and the median are the most appropriate measures of center. And that's a brief introduction to measures of central tendency.